Okay, my friends, prepare thyself. I have been talking a lot about fascia. I did a lot of work on fascia many years ago, 14, 15 years ago. And I worked with a guy called Gil Headley, who is the top fascia guy basically in the world as far as I'm concerned. Now, mostly he works on the fascia right now as fluidity for body movement so that you keep your your fluids moving nice and freely and, and then all of a sudden you realize there's no, no more pain when you move but you have to do it in a certain way and release all the tension that's in you and it's called myofascial release you could do this by actually massaging the fascia that's on the really wrinkled parts of your body and your face and so forth, your forehead and your jowls and all that stuff. Now, I'm just starting to try to understand this. Now, I'm going to show you what they do for myofascial release and why it should be effective. Because here's what they're saying. Fascia massage, also known as myofascial release, is a technique designed to target connective tissues. Those are the things that are always pulling. And that's the fascia. It surrounds muscles, bones, organs, everything in your body. So you not only have to stretch and work with the fascia, you have to release and twist your body in certain ways with certain weights and so forth slowly and, and to get yourself moving. Now, it's primarily used to relieve tension, improve mobility, reduce pain. Basically, that's what Gill's doing, as far as I know. There's a growing interest in its potential aesthetic benefits and making it more beautiful, including reducing the appearance of wrinkles. Well, why would it do that? You're stretching. You think it'd give you more wrinkles. The idea behind fascia massage for wrinkles is based on a concept that tight or restricted fascia can pull on skin, pulling it in and wrinkling it. Now, this is brand new. This just came out a couple of minutes ago. You're giving feedback on a new version of chat. Which one do you like best? <laughs> so all this is going to do is be automated indoctrination again. They're going to say, all the academics are going to say, well, we like this one better because it supports our point of view. So then you're going to have that kind of a response. I like to see w which one presents the evidence. That's what I would say. Chat, please say, which one do you think supports with evidence? Not which one do you like better which has the more supporting evidence and i do all right so why would myofascia release help you this is what myofascia is they're little balls on straps and when they pull this way and they're not stretched enough and they're not fluid enough they start to create wrinkles now, i'm going to show you something this is and this is brand new stuff I researched fascia for 15 years, almost, and uh, I understand it pretty well. Let me show you what they're saying about the fascia. Now, don't forget, that's the little balls and all these little straps. Well, this is the article they wrote back in 2018 saying that interstitium is a newfound organ. Well, what they're talking about is the fluid-filled highway. and. And basically, I wrote the paper on this in 2015, talking about this as one giant system, basically a new organ that services the whole body with these fluids. I called it a, a fluid-filled network. Now, where is this? Here it is right here. Well, my layer was right here. But here's the balls that we were, I was just showing you a second ago. And what do they do when they start to pull together like this and they're not stretched and nice and your skin's laying nice and flat? They pull together and they create these wrinkles. I mean, how, how perfect is this? <laughs> it shows it right here. And that's because it's, it's, they're pulling together. So the stretching and pulling this way and stretching and pulling this way, they start to open up again. That's the way I'm taking it. And it does seem to work. Everybody I have talked to, and I have done it myself, and it does seem to help. You know, I'm not going to say it's going to be overnight fabulous, but who knows. Now, I'm going to go through this whole thing. You want to see what fascia really looks like when it's laying flat and stretched? Here it is right here. You see that? That's fascia stretched. 
These were the balls. Remember I showed you the balls anchored and the straps running between them. This is pinched skin. This is stretched skin. You understand? Look at it carefully. This is skin that's just laying there nice. But it's once it pinches together, you get all these wrinkles in the surface. It's supposed to, it's going to have a pattern that will be comfortable for your skin to lay flat. Then all of a sudden it'll bunch together like this and you'll have pinches and, and wrinkles. <laughs> I'm just, it's what it is. And uh, if I told you where this is, you won't believe it. But this is biology, and this is exactly the same thing. This is like a wrinkle here, this is a wrinkle here, this is stretched skin, this is sort of laying flat skin, which is what you want it to be a nice even pattern. So that you can pull this way, you can pull this way, and it'll stretch, it'll do this, but it comes back to this. It doesn't stay like that. All right, these are wrinkles. All right, what I was just showing you, that fascia, is the Martian Morse code. They saw it, they said, look, they said, oh, it must be dashes and dots and so forth. All right, this is myofascia, and this is pinched, and this is stretched. There's virtually no question. Plus, the Mars crab is a muscle with a, with a, a vein and an artery coming out, servicing the muscle. It's all over there. Biology is everywhere. This is biology on Mars. So what did they do? They came out and they said, oh, the Mars crab. And of course, right away, it's a, well, it's a sand dunes. And then they come up with all this. It, we discovered how the sand dunes form and all this stuff. And it's uplifting here. And it's all this Morse code, Morse code, Morse code, Morse code. <laughs> it's there. It's, it is there. And they're showing it here. Mars Morse code. What's going on here? What's going on? How do they do this? What's what's this all about? Well, I know exactly what it's about, and I just showed you what it's about. All right, this is a, this is just a mind blower, but it's true. I showed you the wrinkled skin, how the wrinkles form because of the myofascia pulling itself together, and, and if you release it, it seems to f lay flatter. Basically, that's what I'm being told, and I'm not making any special claims. But I, I am making this claim that this is on Mars. It's called the Mars Morse Code. And this is also on Mars, which is called the Mars Crab. Now, anybody that's been with me at any time, they know this, what's going on here. This is muscle. And these are sarcomeres right here, and that's connective tissue in between. The red stuff has eroded away. And that is the artery that feeds all the muscle, and that's the vein. This is on Mars. There's no erosion up here. Don't tell me it's not Mars. I, I do my research very well. There is no erosion here whatsoever because there's no rain on Mars. Now, that is the Mars crab, and that's why there's no erosion to these legs. Normally, they just erode right off, and all you can see is the center. In this case, it just dusted off. And let me show you another shot that will show these sarcomeres in unbelievable detail. Look at this. You see this? And you see again, all this is just, this is like powder. Somebody just put powder here. There's no erosion from rain. It's impossible to have this on the, here in the, in the world. Now, these are the connective tissues. These are the sarcomeres. They're, and they're tough, they're tough, they're tough. These won't break down. The red stuff just runs off. That's the cheap stuff. Now, here's, here's what's going on here. These are, again, muscle sarcomeres. Here's what heart sarcomeres are. Same thing. This was from a heart attack victim. But they have a, a layers here, and then they have the blocks here. And the blocks erode along these lines, just like it ripped here. There's, there's gooey substances here. And the red stuff just erodes out, and it leaves all of these extremely fine lines of connective tissue, just as you see right here. They say this took millions of years, all oh, to just layer, 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 layer. No, absolutely not. This took like a weekend when the... Mars was the same situation as us. We almost got hit by Venus. Mars did get hit. And the Mars trench is, is wider than the United States and deep as you can believe. And it just ripped the whole, you know, 
globe there into shreds and killed everything on the surface. And that's why it's a red planet, because this is literally blood. That is blood coming out of those sarcomeres. It's just what it is. Now, again, this is up on Mars. When all of this, the straps erode away in certain conditions, you'll end up just with the balls, just like you see here. That's all you have here is the balls. The straps have completely eroded away because it's a wrinkle. There's a wrinkle zone here, and this is a bump sticking up. That's what wrinkles are, the bumps and ridges and so forth. And the, the, the straps wore off, and all you have is the bumps left. And that's exactly what happens right here on Earth and also on Mars. This is Mars again. These are what's called the Mars blueberries. So what's this all about? Oh, who cares? Don't worry about that. These are exactly identical, identical to the Moki marbles. And they're sitting on this basement layer of skin exactly like the Moki marbles. They're the same. Everything's the same. These, and they're all over um, Arizona and... I think Nevada and all out there in the Midwest. I mean, it's just everywhere because there was just giant creatures literally everywhere. And these are the same things as those green mice, only the green mice are still feeding off of frozen tissue that's now starting to erode. This is beyond belief, but it's true. And I mean, I don't mean to shock you, but that's just a fact. This is up on Mars. There's life everywhere in the universe. There's just nothing but life as far as I can determine. You see that? Those are those green balls. The same balls, only they were, this was frozen, and the f flesh was literally f f been like in a refrigerator, a freezer. And now it's thawing out, and the moss is jumping right into that red blood in those balls. And eventually it'll, it'll, it'll eat all up and there'll, there'll be nothing but metals left in the center, which is going to be those moky marbles. But you see them? They're everywhere. They're literally everywhere because the skin was literally everywhere. Now this is up in Alaska. So it's beginning to thaw out. It's in fresh water conditions and moss thrives in red blood. I mean thrives. And this right here, my friends, believe it or not, is a heart. And that right there is the plumbing of the heart. I'll be showing it in a microscope. And that's where the blood is, is the, the moss is growing down into the blood. The blood is still in here somewhere. There's enough blood in here to support this moss, just like it's there. I don't put any water on here. You don't have to put any water at all, and moss will just stay there. I have other ones here, the same thing. They're growing out of, I'll put it in a microscope at some point here, and we'll look, and you'll be able to see. This, this is the plumbing of the heart. That's where the heart tubes come out. It's extreme, this is, uh, mud fossil, extremely transitioned, totally transitioned. And it died laying flat like that. I can tell that's the side that was down flat. Just like that. And some of them turn just to meat. Some of them, you know, just look, look just like it was when it was alive. It depends on the conditions that, that, that it was in when it died and how long it was submerged for, if it was alkaline, acid, what transition metals were in there. These just died and were frozen. And now the stuff is just growing on there. It's because, it's, it, like I say, there's something going on with moss. It's just, it just happens in red blood. Whether it's already in the red blood, I don't know. I can't, I, I just don't know anymore because I, I know it's just 100% red blood just absolutely is saturated with this moss in the right conditions. Let me show you some other shots. It's just, it's staggering how attractive the red blood and the surrounding of those, those, um, those tendon balls, it's got to have something to do with, uh, it's the fascia part that it's eating. It's eating the, the fascia. Well, let me show you. All right, you see that? I believe that's the end of a muscle fiber coming this way, but it's, you can see all the green moss growing on there. It loves that. This could be something else. I'm not going to make it, but it's obviously biology. That's not just accidental. Now, the other one here is... Uh, this is basically another one very similar. I don't think that's the same one, but it's another one. And I believe this is a bundle of muscle. And that's how they come. They come in a bundle like that with a whole bunch of fibers inside of them. 
Now, it could be tendon. Now, um, what was I going to show you? Where do you see this one? Look at this. <laughs> this guy's looking. I said, what the hell is going on here? Why is it like somebody came up and painted it? This is white and then green and moss. What's that all about? I can tell you exactly what it's about. This layer right in this area here was where the vein blood was. And the black vein blood makes white lichen grow on top of it. And the green is where the ma I mean the green is the moss grows on where the red blood was below it. This is tendon. These are tendon fibers. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's just the way they <laughs> What can I say? And um I got so much to go over with you guys, and I, I, it just never ends. Never ends. And um, these are similar to the little mouse balls, but these are in, in, they're similar. But the real ones that are the mouse balls are um, from the skin, from right, from right under the skin, right here. And this is wrinkled skin. <laughs> this is a wrinkle so at the top. Isn't that something? All of this stuff just falls into place when you start looking. And now if you pull the, the fibers and everything, and everything sort of flattens out, it, it, apparently, if you do it regularly, it stays sort of smooth. I'm hearing it from everybody. Now it's going to be the biggest thing going on very shortly. And I work with, uh, well, I don't work with him, but I discuss back and forth with Gil Headley. He's the top guy in the world for fashion. He's the fashion guy. And uh, anyway, you can, not only can you release and get rid of wrinkles, but you can get rid of pain and, and issues like that. And I have done it myself, and it does work. But you have to work at it a little bit, not much. And you have to do it the right way, and you can't damage yourself. If you start feeling pain, you're doing something wrong. All right, so um, I don't give any medical advice, but Gil Headley is a PhD fascist specialist, world renowned. He teaches anatomy everywhere. And he's an autopsy anatomist. He gets, he gets right in the middle of things. So, um, and this is who I talk with to, to get my information. All right, so I love you all. Thank you. Have a sterling day.